You're tuned in to Ask the Master Auto Technician. Car questions? Get answers right now. Call 850-763-0555. James Auto Center. We fix it right. Guaranteed. Beep, 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 beep. Yeah. All right, good morning, everybody. We survived the holidays. Well, at least I survived the holidays. Uh, this show is pre-recorded, so if you're watching this, this is going to be the Monday after, well, it's going to be January 2nd is the actual day we're back. We record this show a week late, oh, a week early, and we play it back a week later. Okay, huh? we're recording it on the 2nd, and yeah. it's going to air on the 9th. 9th, yes, seven days late. But the good thing about it is this information is still pertinent, whether it's today, the, the 2nd, or the 9th. So the information I'm talking about is preventive maintenance and repair of vehicles and we'll have Scott Hobbs in a little while and we'll talk about preventive maintenance in your home making sure that you're you survive the holidays and if you need and he's one of our sponsors so we pr shamelessly promote Hob, Mr. Rooter Plumbing at Hobbs Plumbing over there but uh, one of the things that I see a lot and I saw that this week in the holidays you'll see a lot of boat trailers or uh, people that are pulling trailers and you'll see a wheel that has fallen off because the wheel bearings frozen up uh, it, because most people don't ever pay any attention to trailer bearings. Not until, well, not until the thing starts squeaking or burning or smoking or turns red hot or the wheel falls off. Do a lot of people pay attention to wheel bearings? They put, uh, especially on trailers, um, whether it's your motorcycle trailer, your ski doo trailer, your um, whatever trailer you may have, and no one pays a lot of attention to it. Well, these same bearings in the trailer are the same type of bearings that are on a lot of uh, rear wheel drive vehicles out there that have been around for a long time. And growing up in the 60s and 70s, I was always taught, along with everybody else in the century, every 25,000 miles to remove your front wheel bearings, remove your front wheel bearings, clean them, repack them with grease, with, uh, with grease that's designed to handle the hotness of disc brakes. It has to be able to handle that high temperature grease. Put that in there and change the grease seal. So that's like every two years. Well, believe it or not, it is. And I have people out here this very day when I suggest to them, when I find their bearings are loose after 25 to 30,000 miles, they got a little play in them. I suggest that they remove them, clean them, and pack them so and replace the seal. And what they go, kind of vehicles still have? Chevy uh, Chevy trucks. For, I, mean, I shouldn't say Chevy trucks. Uh, what Ford kind of cars? Any car that's a rear-wheel drive vehicle, first off, it has to be a rear-wheel drive vehicle. That's the first thing. Okay. Can't be all-wheel drive. It's got to be a rear-wheel drive vehicle. And a lot of cars have serviceable hubs. Uh, Grand Marquis, you know, anything that is rear-wheel drive will have that. I'm not going to say all of them, but cars that are at least five, year, five years old, ha there's a lot of them out there that still have it. But the point is, this is preventive maintenance that no one ever bothers to look at. Why don't you find out if your cars do have serviceable wheel bearings? Most people don't pay any attention to the wheel bearings until they're sitting on the side of the road. And I've got seven tips out there that can... You know, that I put together along, well, I got it out of a magazine about what, you know, what causes bearings to fail. Uh, number one, what's the load of the weight of the bearing that's on the vehicle or on the trailer? If, you know, if you're carrying, well, like Scott Hobbs, he brings up, they have uh, backhoes they carry, they carry uh, bobcats, all this stuff. And a couple of their trailers they've had, they've actually had too heavy of uh, an object on the trailer uh, for the size wheels they've got. They really needed a bigger trailer. And they kept wondering, why are we always tearing up the hubs on this thing? You know, the bearings always go bad. And I kind of looked at it, I said, what are you carrying on it? And they said, well, you know, it's a small trailer. And well, we're carrying this right here on it. I went, well, I don't think this trailer is rated for that much weight. Sure enough, that's what the problem happened to be. They needed to put that object on a bigger trailer. So make sure that what you're towing, the trailer is designed to carry that kind of weight. That's rule number one out there. You know, because when you turn, when a vehicle is being turning left or turning right, you can't really measure the amount of load on there very, very well because you have thrust and lateral, lateral, excuse me, thrust loads and ra and ra I'm gonna get here and radial loads, thrust and radial loads, that thrust going for radial side to side. Uh, what's going on as, as far as the amount of strain that's going on the bearing? Very, very important that you make sure you have the right wheel bearings or the right size trailer depending on the load you got. If you've got a tr uh, trailer that's designed to carry, you know, a 25 foot Hatteras or 26 foot Hatteras, that's, you know, that's wonderful. It's designed for that. But you don't want to be putting that 25 foot Hatteras on a, on a one axle trailer out there that's designed normally for three axle trailer because that's just too much. So you're going to have to make sure you have the right 
the right trailer load for what you're trying to take care of. Uh, too much grease. Here's the other thing I see. People say, they bearing buddies. Oh, my Lord, have mercy. I recommend those own trailers. People have bearing buddies on there with a little grease fitting on the side. They sit there and they'll pack that sucker up every, every time they get on a tra trip. They don't think anything about it. And then all of a sudden they wonder why they're having to replace the, you know, the axle has froze up, the bearing has seized up. What ends up happening is grease gets hot. It has to expand. You fill that sucker up full of grease inside there, it's got nowhere to go. Guess what it's going to do? It's going to blow the seal out. Yeah, it's got to go somewhere. So it blows the seal out. When it blows the seal out, the grease is hot. Where's the grease go? It goes outside the vehicle, goes, it goes away from the wheel bearing. Now you're getting dirt, water, contamination there. Guess what? You've got a seal on, excuse me, you got a bearings on the way out on that right there. So make sure that you don't put too much grease in. Every year it's recommended on a trailer, on a trailer that sits, to pull it apart, clean it, repack the wheel bearings, and put it back together. On a car, it's every 25 to 30,000 miles, which could be every two years if they have serviceable front wheel bearings. Some rear wheel drive, excuse me, some front wheel drive cars, I was thinking about it, have wheel bearings that can be serviced. Not that many of them. Not that many of them. There's a few of them out there, but most of them are sealed hubs that can't be serviced. So that's not a problem. Number three, what caused the failure in the first place? Now, we talk a lot about what causes wheel bearing failures. And the biggest thing is that what I tell people is wheel bearings, normally the one that goes out first is on the passenger side. And they look at me and go, all right, James, can you explain to me why you think a wheel bearing goes out uh, more on the passenger side than the driver's side. Well, one reason is, remember I talked about turns? You turn to the left a lot faster than you turn to the right because you can't see to the right on that other side of the car as easily as you can to the left. So you'll turn faster on to the left and at the same time you wear that right tire, that passenger tire out the edge of it, you scuff it more. So that's why it's important to rotate tires, but we'll get back to that. That's another show. But make sure that you've got uh, make sure, you know, that the, uh, where was it on the wheel bearing on the driver's side, if on the passenger side, if it goes bad, you better be prepared for the one on the driver's side to fail pretty soon or the other way around. Most bearings have a tendency to fail in pairs. And I've got a lot of people that sit there and go, I just can't believe that. Well, when I tell them that weak neglected antifreeze is another cause of bearing failure, about that time, the eyes roll back in their head, their ears shut off, and they look at me like, this guy's trying to sell me snake oil. No, it's not me that's coming up with this. This actually comes from automotive engineers who are a heck of a lot smarter than I am. What they realized was over a period of time, especially with today's cars, the front wheel drive cars, they noticed this back in the 80s when the K cars and uh, the Dodge products came out, they were having a just an incredible amount of bearing failure on the front wheel drive vehicles. They were, you know, Chrysler was sticking their head and they're going, you know, we don't recommend, we, you know, we don't know what's going on. They recommend putting ground straps on it. And finally, they started doing some looking at it and going, well, what's causing this bearing failure? And what they realized were people weren't doing preventive maintenance correctly. And what? Preventive maintenance? No, there's no bearing to repack on that, but they weren't changing their antifreeze and their coolant. They weren't doing that on a regular basis because back then, back in the 80s, we still had brass copper radiators and we really didn't push, you know, doing coolant exchanges and keeping proper coolant because we went, eh, they're big enough radiators, they can handle a lot. If they get too clogged up a little bit, it will still be okay. Not a big deal. Let's not worry about it. What we found out is weak, neglected antifreeze actually help exacerbate the, the problem with wheel bearings failure. And people go, huh, how can that happen? Okay, let's get things going. If you got weak, neglected antifreeze and you're moving it through your radiator rapidly and you're heating it up, you're making electricity. Can we get agreement on that? If it's weak, neglected antifreeze, nothing much more than water, not much better than water, and you've got all these things inside there in suspension that are vibrating and, and you're heating them up, then they vibrate even more and they make electricity. As much as, as, much as a half a volt, and sometimes more, but mostly it's around 0 0.3 to 0 0.5 millivolts. It gets more than 0.5 millivolts, that car really runs like dog doo doo. It's terrible. It doesn't run well at all. So that's why I'm telling you, know, that's what ends up happening. You've got, you're making electricity. Well, not a big deal, you say. So it's making electricity. It's going to tear my radiator up. Well, yeah, but unfortunately, you're making electricity at your wheel bearings. You're making electricity. Yeah, you are. You're making electricity at your alternator bearing. 
you are because it's you're making static electricity as it's being moved more so with on the car on the, where the tires contact the road you're actually creating hundreds of thousands of static electricity volts with no amperage of course but that's still making voltage well you've got one battery source or voltage source over here on the on the wheel bearings and you've got another battery uh, source over here it's being made by the wheel bearing and the wheel bearing voltage is attracted to the voltage is being done by the radiator and that and when it does it sparks every time it jumps that little arc it takes a piece of metal from that wheel bearing and jumps across from the positive side of you know from one side of the wheel bearing to the ground side of the wheel bearing trying to get to the to the radiator if there were that electricity it it, it pulls it across arcing the metal taking metal from one part to another part causing bearings to fail weak neglected antifreeze is one of the biggest killers of wheel bearings whether they're Front wheel drive, rear wheel drive, it does, or all wheel drive, it doesn't matter. That's one of the things I've seen out there over the years. Mark Sarlo, automotive engineer, and I talked about, started talking about this probably, what, 18, 19 years ago. And we've had a lot of people call out and say, ah, it's wooey pooey. And we've also had a lot of people that are a lot smarter than I am, or even Mark, that called this is a scientific thing that actually happens and what causes these problems. And that's what uh, engineers are designed to do is figure out what's going on. And back in the 80s, when we had this problem, the engineers came to us and said, change your antifreeze more often and you'll stop your wheel bearing failure. We did, and we stopped the wheel bearing failures that we were replacing at least once a year on people's cars under warranty. Yeah, that gets rather expensive. And once you start, once you figure out what causes the problem, that's a good place to start. Uh, number four, we've talked about what causes things to blow out, what causes bearings to fail. And we, uh, the pastor side wears out most because it's where the dirt and potholes and things like that are. But you need to make sure, number four, grease does wear out. And I really couldn't say it wears out. It just gets really overloaded. It gets overloaded with the impurities. Uh, and that's really what happens. I really can't say the grease actually gets wore out. It just gets contaminated. Uh, it does. It gets hot. It gets cold. It gets hot. It gets cold. It just doesn't, you know, it just doesn't do its job anymore. It gets old. It gets oxidized. It actually does, just like oil. Oil has a shelf life of two years on the shelf, not being used. I got some people out there that are their cars going on five and six years. They, they don't have enough miles on it yet. They're just waiting until they get enough miles, that 3,000 miles, where they change the oil. They only drive like five miles a week. But the point being is, if you, if you open that valve cover up and look down inside it, you will see nothing but sludge in that engine. Trust me, because I've looked inside them and that's what you see. Oil will oxidize, so will grease. The other thing out there, a lot of people who do change bearings on trailers or whatever, they'll get a bearing that looks like it fits and they may not change the race or they'll put a bearing in there or a race may not fit quite right. That's the other thing. Make sure you got the, the correct fit. Too many people, well, they'll sit, look at a bearing, they'll take the measure and say, okay, that'll work. Well, no, it really needs to be exact. It really, really, really does. Make sure you use a proper application and the proper bearing for it. And make sure you use the pro don't, don't chintz on quality. I see too many people out there that'll, give an example, a front wheel drive, Ford, four wheel drive, uh, hub assembly. Anna Maria, my clip is it around four hundred dollars for a four wheel drive? I'm just guessing. Trying you're to... on pretty close okay. on the money. All right, you can buy one aftermarket for a fraction of that, and you put it on, and you will end up changing that wheel bearing every couple of years, and you will end up paying for it several times over by the labor involved, by the amount of part. So don't chance buy the right part and be done with it. I'm serious. You're, you're money ahead of the game. We got to go to a break. When we get back, we're going to talk to Scott Hobbs, and we'll probably finish tomorrow talking about the other two, which is uh, six and seven. Just, well, the biggest thing is make sure you do proper torque on them and make sure that you put the seal in properly. Don't damage the seal. Too many people do that. They damage the seal by dinging them, by banging them with a hammer. A seal driver is so much cheaper. Hey, this is James Morris. We'll be right back. Scott Hobbs calling from Mr. Ritter. And if you've got a car question or you've got a plumbing question, now's the time to call 763-0555. We'll be right back. James Auto Center. We fix it right. Guaranteed.